destroy the entire disease. We're going to do the same, right? Put your pens down. Please put your pens down. We're going to discuss. We're just going to discuss the trends, right? Just going to discuss whatever I'm going to ask. You're going to answer that, right? Just like a conversation. We're not going to read. We're just going to converse. We're going to, we're going to converse about the disease. We're going to understand the disease. At the same time, I want you to visually imagine whatever we converse. And then I want you to write in your own words. I also will write. But I want you to write in your own words. The advantage of writing a disease in your own words is like writing a love letter to medicine. Do you need to memorize your love letter? No. It will be here. It will be here throughout your life. So you are going to understand and I want every one of you listening to this video to write in your own words. Anything. I just want the essence of the disease. Fine. Got it? Ready? Okay, let's start. So it's a temporal uh, arthritis or an Jain cell arthritis. Let's go to the pathogenesis. So the pathogenesis states that I have some unidentified vascular antigen that is being picked up by my antigen pressing cell and I have some problem and it causes an damage. So my antigen pressing cell due to some problem considers this antigen as foreign. So it takes it and presents to my CD4 cells. So what will my CD4 cell do? Okay, recognize the antigen and get reactivated. They get activated, produce interleukins, interferons. What will this interferon do? Second chapter. Interferon goes and converts my antigen presenting cell to an activated macrophage. What will an activated macrophage do? M1 activated macrophage secretes more interleukins, more interferons, brings more and more people and forms a cell and forms a structure. We call them a granuloma. Will a granuloma have giant cells or not? Yes. That's why I named them giant cell arthritis. My pathogenesis is done. So this is an acute problem or a chronic problem. It's like an autoimmune reaction, right? 100% a chronic problem. What is the hallmark of chronic inflammation? You'll never forget this forever in your life. Tissue destruction and healing by fibrosis. So am I right in saying that my temporal artery will have a tissue destruction? My temporal artery will definitely have a tissue destruction? Yes. Will it heal by fibrosis? It will heal by fibrosis, right? So when it heals by fibrosis, my temporal artery will become thicker. Yes? Yes. Absolutely become thicker. So, when it becomes thicker, my lumen will become smaller. Yes? When the lumen becomes smaller, will that be an ischemic pain? Absolutely yes. Will the patient have pain in this area? Yes. So, the patient will come to you with headache. Age is very important here. A 50 plus person coming with a headache, please touch the vessel. It's a fibrotic artery. Will it be palpable? 100% it will be palpable. You, when you also had a headache, you might have it now as well. You will not have a palpation. You will see the pulsit. That pulsatility is different from palpation. Palpable like a cord, like a thick cord, like a rubber band. That's so thick it will become. So that's diagnostic. I have to pick it up there. Why I am going to more concentrate on this person is, if you miss it, this can spread to my maxillary artery. It's an inflammatory disease. It will definitely spread throughout the body. When it spreads to my maxillary artery, my muscles of mastication will have less blood supply. The patient will come to you and say, Doctor, I am talking too much. When I eat hard foods, I feel jaw pain, jaw claudication on movement. You will say, don't talk too much. Because for four years, I was not taught jaw claudication as a symptom. That's what I am going to say. That also I want to miss. Again, I put as an MCQ. The most specific finding for temporal arthritis is jaw claudication. We gave MCQs just for us to understand. That's all. Right? Got it? So then, why I am giving so many MCQs on the symptoms is, if I miss these two, it can go to my ophthalmic artery and it will cause a permanent blindness. Because of our inefficiency, I should not miss it. A person should not become blind because of us, right? That's the reason this is very, very important. Got it? So we know the clinical presentation. You visualize the patient, an old lady coming to you and talking to you. You had a patient. Now the patient is in front of me. I have diagnosed, I have thought it's in giant cell arthritis. I have to confirm it. So I take the patient, go to the lab. I am doing, it's an inflammatory disease. I am doing an inflammatory marker. Will it be elevated? Yes. ESR will be elevated. CRP will be elevated. You can write pages on it. Right? I take a biopsy. In the biopsy, what I am going to see is granuloma and giant cell because you guys, and we discuss about the pathogenesis. I want to add one more finding here. It's tissue destruction. So my vessel will be destroyed, right? Will be chopped, will be destroyed. I had one thick layer on the inner surface of media called as internal elastic lamina. That's one of the thickest layer, right? So if that thick layer is destroyed, I will believe and you will believe there's a tissue destruction. That's pathognomonic. The finding of 
fragmented internal elastic lamina is pathognomonic for giant cell arthritis. What stain will you use? PVG. Perfect. Who said you don't know medicine and pathology? Your boss, your kings of it. I got everything here. So now comes your entrance related confusion. See, people confuse you. Right? People confuse you. No, please don't get confused at any point in your life. They'll say that, see, Robbins gives one number, Harrison gives one number, or the medicine person say, Harrison is a superior book, the Robbins will be superior for pathologist. Then say, no, this is only correct, this is only correct. And all of them are going to confuse you. But none of them read what Robbins says and what Harrison says. The numbers, numbers are not important. Who said? I'll tell what Robbins says. Robbins says, I should have at least one centimeter biopsy to pick up this lesion because this lesion is patchy. So I need a segment of one centimeter, at least one centimeter to report it negative. If I'm not seeing anything in the one centimeter, I'll be happy to call it negative. That's what Robin says. What Harrison says is the yield of diagnosis, yield, which means more chance of diagnosis will increase when the biopsy is three to five centimeter. Both are different statements, right? Both have totally different meaning. Then why the hell are you comparing it and say there's a controversy? Medicine is no controversy. Controversies are created by you and me, human beings. That's medicine. It's science. Science is no controversy at all. If there's controversy, it's idiopathy. That's all fine. So both are different statements. Both are true statements. Look at the question. If at all they ask, answer accordingly. Fine. Since it's patchy, I take a biopsy and I confirm. We both confirm together clinically, lab-wise, as well as microscopy, it's giant cell arthritis. How do you treat? Inflammatory disease. Give the one drug of steroids or anti-TNF receptors. Perfect. We discussed the entire disease. Yes, right. Did you find any difficulty while discussing? No. Because your basics are strong. When you don't have a strong basic, you'll find it difficult. This is what everyone in the world knows about giant cell arthritis. Some have MBBS degree, some have MD degree, some have DM degree. Knowledge is the same, right? Understanding and implementation makes a difference. And you want to implement to the topmost level, right? Got it? So now we discussed about everything. Now I want you to write a love letter to Jane Cell Arthritis in your own words so that you never ever forget. I will write in my own words, right? Let's go and start and let's go to the journey of Jane Cell Arthritis.